Uh, it was called On the Sunny Side of the Street because we actually found out that since we started the chapter back in 1966, uh, that is one song that was sung in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and now the 2010s. Uh, it was one song that kept coming back. Uh, so here's a small presentation of that. I used to walk in the shadows, gloom followed me each day. Then you came along with your happy song, and my worries flew. An effort was started to organize a chapter in the 19, early 1950s. Um, that sadly failed. Uh, then they got inspiration from the Music Man. In 1966, within a few months, they actually had 37 members and a charter from the society. Uh, that is uh, our first president, Mr. Ed Furmender, receiving the uh, charter. Um, in the early years, we were attracting members and audience uh, because of the growth of area jobs. Uh, Danbury had a very big blue collar um, influx during the 1960s, so there was a lot of people coming in. Uh, the picture on there is uh, Mr. Bill Mannion, uh, one of our former directors, who was a director for us three different times uh, from 1968 to 1972, from 1993 to 1996, and from 1998 to 2003. Uh, there was uh, a movement from the Danbury Motor into the Elks Club because of raising prices. There was also... <coughs> um, Something called the Rathskeller, which was a bar at the Elks Club, which caused many of the members to want to come to rehearsals. In order for the break, they would actually go to the bar, and some of them would enjoy the bar. So it was uh, definitely fun, and uh, crowds buying the selling of nostalgia. That is one of our earlier quartets. Um, we also, uh, Bill Mannion was going around to local areas looking for um, like any information he could from other directors. And he actually found uh, Mr. Tony Gross, the assistant director at uh, the Poughkeepsie chapter was very knowledgeable. And so he talked with uh, the board of directors and got them to agree to hire him as the director. Uh, he was bringing in the recruitment of young people and there was an increase in the number of the quality of quartets because of like the coaching and everything that was going on for that. Uh, our expansion it started in 1972 with 38 members. By June of 1973, there were 51 members. By January of 1974, there were 75 members. And by December of 1976, we had 99 members on the risers. There was actually a little joke going on that they were going to just go outside, find the nearest drunk and bring them in so they would have 100 members. 
Uh, they were holding clam bakes and backyard singouts. Uh, there was a, a comedy octet that was doing. There was also the Danbury Quartet uh, Challenge Cup where they would actually ch challenge. Danbury had a lot of uh, quartets and they would challenge chap chapter quartets from around the entire district to come in and see if they could beat the Danbury Quartets. Uh, they, and there was actually once where the director decided to do five shows in a day in completely different areas of the, uh, the area in order to see if the chorus was able to do that. Uh, that is one of our founding members, Mr. Uh, Bob Connolly, complete with a tuxedo shirt and shorts. <laughs> Uh, there is also a big thing that is a picture of the chorus uh, after the Northeastern District Contest in 1977 with a few of our members. Uh, the the Mad Hatter Chorus also went on to local TV and was doing uh, concerts that way. Uh, we also had a very large uh, guest night at least once a month. Uh, and there, there are some various pictures of quartets singing for the uh, guests. Uh, then we had Ray Wickstead, who was a who was a uh, local music educator, and so he brought in as many of the people from that uh, high school as he could. Um, he was they the chorus made fifth in the Northeastern District in 1977 and 1981, and even received the Connecticut Division Championship in 1980 under his direction. Uh, they were, the reasons for that were a couple of very memorable sets that they did. Uh, it was the Rosie set, which was uh, Midnight Rose and Meet Me in Rose Time Rosie, where each member would have uh, a rose or a, uh, a tie of red. You also had the girl set of For Me and My Gal <coughs> and uh, Give Me a Gal, and they did that in the 19, 1979 and throughout the 80s. Uh, there were also some very memorable characters like uh, Joe Tallarico, who was a very a uh, small Italian man who had a quartet where the other three guys were over six feet and here he was at like five foot four and so they would like block him or they had like these giant hats on that were filled with water and they would always dump him and he would end up drenched by the end of the uh, the, the sets. Uh, there were reasons for a slow decline. Um, there were a lot of uh, qualifications that they were trying to institute and some of the members did not like that. Um, the Elks Hall started to deteriorate. Uh, there was a trade-off between uh, quality of the per performance and the and enthousi enthusiastic attendance, which started to affect things, uh, as well as you had uh, a lot of the blue collar jobs were uh, leaving. So there was a slow decline in the uh, numbers of, from the membership. Uh, and then it actually got to a point where there were 13 members and none of them were baritones at one point. So it was a very challenging time from 1987 to about 2002, which is when uh, there was a very big flux of the director seat is another reason. Uh, you had one director who was only there for two years, another director who was only there for a year. Uh, you had... Do Donald Sutherland, who was director from 1968 to 1969, and then again from 92 to 93. Uh, as I said, Bill Mannion was there from 93 to 96 and 98. It was, there was just a whole, the, the director's seat was just changing a lot. And then under President Bob Bradley and music vice president Bill Mannion, they decided to focus on youth, um, working very well with the Danbury High School Magical Singers. And they brought in their youngest director, Joel Connect, in 2003. Uh, and he was the person who actually dragged me to a rehearsal because he was my ride home. And so uh, he got me into singing with the chorus. And I was quickly made the tenor section leader and then quickly bumped up to assistant director. And then once he left to take a job in another area of the state, I was appointed director and I have been there ever since. Uh, and under my direction, I've tried to change it so that we have a chorus of quartets. Uh, we have like um, up in the top left, we have real chemistry. In the middle is the college quartet conundrum. Top right, we have traveling men. Lower left, 
is Dead Ringers. The bottom middle, we have Loco Fedora. And then in the bottom right, we have Blue Moon. Uh, and also a chorus of fellowship and family. Uh, these are various pictures. The one on the top left is us hosting, I believe it was the fourth or fifth annual Yankee Division uh, barbecue, where we actually would have members of various choruses from uh, Poughkeepsie, Bridgeport, Waterbury, Manchester, Danbury, um, and just all over the Yankee Division coming to, to Danbury for just a fun night of food and singing. Um, that the bottom left is a picture of us directing the uh, caroling in Brewster, New York, out on the streets. And we got very uh, involved with the local uh, base baseball team and singing at a few of their games. And that's their mascots there. Uh, and then somehow comedy started to sneak in to our sets, complete with... Um, Guys dressing up in raincoats for the song Yesterday I Heard the Rain, uh, dressing up as the characters from The Wizard of Oz for one of our shows, including my wife creating an entire Dorothy costume for me. Uh, um, us, myself, John Ward, and Joe Hunter dressing up in feather boas and Vegas showgirl hats for Cabaret. And then this past year, we did a full comedy set with um, our mafia. We were we made fun of and had members there from uh, all the old mafia movies. This is a hopeless jumble. You're just like the guys in the song. Every time you make a decision, somebody starts whining. We need to come to a consensus here. Well, well, well excuse me, excuse me. We did agree on a theme song for the candidate, didn't we, guys? Yes. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. We have a song. You betcha. <laughs> Good. Let's hear it. How many days are here again? Last Christmas to you. Happy birthday to you. It's Christmas. I rest my case. During this quarantine time, some of the things that we're doing is uh, we continue to rehearse in person outdoors. And for those members who either can't because of time, because we're rehearsing earlier, or that do not feel comfortable, we have Zoom going as well for them. Uh, we've recently purchased some HEPA fil filtration devices in order to actually begin to rehearse indoors uh, with, uh, with, with, with the space that we have. Uh, we're continuing to be coached by top course, uh, coaches in the society. Uh, including Deborah Lynn, John Ward, Joe Hunter, KJ McAlee Jerkins, and uh, Rosemary Rosemary Serrano, who is the sister of one of one of our members, who is a uh, core is a choral professor and an opera singer who's been helping us. And we are preparing for a fun-filled comedy set for the 2021 Cleveland International Chorus Festival that we have signed up for. And you can follow us. Uh, either on our website, we are on Facebook, Twitter, we have a YouTube channel, 
And you can also, if you want to purchase our uh, book that was written by one of by our members called On the Sunny Side, which goes through the full history of the 50 years of the Mad Hatter Chorus. <laughs>